The name of this year tonight is Women in Mayim Achronim. Uh, just curious, uh, this is an, int- an informal scientific poll. How many of m- how many of the men here wash Mayim Achronim? <laughs> That's how you describe Mayim Achronim. You mean ever? Okay. How many of you? Okay. Let me let me break down let me break down this survey even more. How many of you wash my machronim any time you eat bread? Because you could sit there. Okay. Okay. How many of you wash my machronim only on Shabbos or on special occasions? Okay. All right. And how many of you? Ha- have my machronim that all the people at your table wash, including the women. Okay, so that's none of the above. what basis that is. Okay, so here's what we're going to see. What we're going to see tonight is that. Maya Machronim is a halacha that's in the Shulchan Aruch that makes no distinction between men and women, makes no distinction between Shabbos and Chol, makes no distinction between whether you have a Mizunim or not. All of those uh, distinctions are post Talmudic, post Shulchan Aruch even. We have to figure out what's going on. So we're just going to focus on Maya Machronim and women tonight. And then maybe we'll uh, spend another time talking about other minhagim around Mayim Achronim as well. Um, three and a half gemaras that I want to look at with you tonight uh, very briefly. Just to look at the Makoros and Chazal for Mayim Achronim. The first, of course, is the, the Gemara in Bracha Stafnam Nun, Nun Gimel Amid Beis, which is a very short Gemara, which says, Tan of Iskadishtem, Ebel Mayim Rishonim, the Yisam Kedoshim, Ebel Mayim Achronim. The Pasuk in the Torah says, V'hizka dishtem, v'yisam kedoshim, ki ani Hashem elokeichem. You shall be sanctified and you shall be holy, because I, Hashem, am holy. So the Gemara breaks it down and says, V'hizka dishtem, and it would seem that this is all asmachta, of course. There's not, this is not biblical law that the Gemara is deriving. It's an asmachta telling us that there are different ways for a Jew to sanctify himself or herself. And Chazal instituted v'hizkadishtem mayim rishonim, wash before you eat your meal. V'hizam kedoshim, be holy. This refers to mayim achronim, wash after you eat, before you bench. And ki kadosh, because holy, ze shemen, this refers to fragrant oil that people would place on their hands after they would wash Mayim Achronim. Ani Hashem Elokeichem Zubracha. This is Birkas Hamazam. So there's certainly one thing that no one that I know does today, although maybe it's not so far-fetched because people use Purell these days. <laughs> this was like a, uh, it wasn't antibacterial, but it was anti-odor type of uh, fragrant oil because after you ate, your hands would not only be greasy and dirty, but they would also have, uh, you know, they would be smelly from the food. So they would put on, not only would they rinse off the surface dirt or schmutz on their fingers, but they would also put on some fragrant oil to take away the, the bad smell of the food that they had eaten up with their fingers, and then they would bench. Well, why, why would we need an asmata for benching? We have a mitzvah. In Achinami, but the asmachta is the structure of the holiness of within the meal. It's not that you need a br- you need an asmachta for birka samozim per se, but if you want to know how to structure yeah. holiness within the course of your meal that ends with benching, this is the structure. Would, would you make a bracha on that on that oil if it was fragrant? No, no. So, oh, you mean as far as like a bori minei uh, v'samim? Uh, Possibly. I don't know. I don't think that's undertaken in the Gemara. Perhaps it is. I don't remember. Okay. Let's take a look at the, at the next Gemara. This is in Chulun Daf Kofheim at Beis, number two. The Gemara says, Amr of Yehuda Bereder of This is probably, you're very familiar with it. Mifnei ma omru mayim achronim chova. Why did the rabbi say that it's obligatory to wash mayim achronim? Shemelech sedom esyesh. Shemesamei esoinayim. Because there's an ingredient called melech sedomis that blinds the eyes. 
And Rashi, if you see, Rashi right just below says, Shemelech Sodom is Yesh, but Omru Chachamim al Kol Achiloscha Achol Melech. Our sages tell us that it, at every meal you should have salt, just like you have salt on the Mizbeach. The cave in Dinaga Bimelech, Kihodor Yohib Yodo, Ainayim, Misamei Luhu Lufichach Tsarich Linotlan. That uh, you're going to therefore invariably be touching salt over the course of your meal. And then if you place your hands or your fingers on your eyes, you could blind yourself, and therefore you need to wash your hands before you bench. And the Gemara continues, let's go back to the Gemara, that you'll only find one granule of Melech Sodomis in an entire core, like a, like a whole bushel of salt, there's only one granule of this very uh, toxic kind of, noxious kind of salt. And Amr le Ravacha Berei de Rava le Ravashi kol milchamai. His question was, the way that at least that Rashi learns the question is, what if you're just measuring salt? Do you have to wash your hands afterwards? Amr le lo mi baye. And he does, said, no, you don't have to. Amr abaye me resha avamina haidu lo mashumaya basra'a al ara mishum zuama. And then Abaye said, originally I thought that uh, that the reason why when you wash Maya Machronim you should not pour the water onto the ground was because of Zuhama, was because that it's uh, like Rashi says, Sherechan Masriach, Veneros Mu'us, because it's yucky, it's gross, you know, you have this dirty water that has the schmutz and the Melech Sedomis on your fingers and it's going to go on the floor, create a bad smell in your house. But no, he said, afterwards I realized, Amr Limar, no, the master taught me, Mishum Deshar Yeruach Ra'a Alayu. There's a mystical uh, effect that is, n that is harmful on Mayim Achronim, and that's the reason why, if you wash <coughs> Mayim Achronim, you should not let the water be on a place which is going to be on the floor. Now, we, we, we actually pass them this way, if you will, Bisman Hazeh, if you do wash Mayim Achronim, you should not wash Mayim Achronim such that the water falls on a place where people will step on. That could actually be on a Kabbalistic level, or you know, a spiritual level, could be injurious. So sometimes people, if there's no other place, they'll wash my machronim under the table where they know that it's going to step, but not a place where there's a, a thoroughfare. Okay, so we've seen two Gemaras so far. One Gemara says that washing your hands before you bench is an aspect of Kedusha, sanctification of your hands. It doesn't have anything to do with the Sakana. It doesn't have anything to do with Melech Sedomis. It's got to do with a Jew should, should be sanctified that his hands should be clean, because cleanliness is next to godliness, right? The Chazal subscribe to that, and therefore your hands should be clean before you embark on saying a bracha. The Gemara in Chulin, however, implies that there's a very uh, practical and uh, uh, hazard, hazard concern for your health, which is Melech Sedonis. Let's take now a look at two other pieces of Gemara. One's a half a Gemara, one's another a story in a Gemara. One's in the Gemara in Chulin, just an Amud later on Daf Kuvvav. Ki Asa Ravdimi Amar. Ravdimi once taught that Maim Rishonim Ha'achilo Basar Chazir. That because of a lack of Maim Rishonim, of washing the Tilas Yidayim, a Jew was fed Chazir. And Achronim Hotziu Esa Isha Mibala. And because of Maim Achronim, a husband divorced his wife. And Ki Asa Rabin Amar Rishonim Ha'achilo Basar Nevela. Achronim Hargu Esanetesh. Rabin had a different version. He said, because of not washing Mayim Rishonim, a person was not fed Chazer, but rather Nevela, which means like non kosher uh, 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 beef, right? And Achronim Hargu Esanetesh, and because of a lack of Mayim Achronim, a husband killed his wife, not just divorced his wife. And <coughs> Rashi tells us the background. Rashi tells us the background of the first case. What is it that a guy ended up eating either chazer meat or nevela meat? So Rashi over there, I'll just speak it outside. There was once, now this would never pass the COR standards, I just want to let you know. But there was a guy, a Jewish guy had a restaurant, and when a Jew would walk in, he would feed him kosher meat. And when a non-Jew would come in, he would feed him non-kosher meat. I mean, so talk about kosher standards. I mean, this sounds ridiculous, right? Same restaurant serving kosher and treif, right? Depending upon what? Maybe had two kitchens. They must have had two kitchens, but <laughs> still wouldn't pass core standards. You can't walk into the same restaurant. So anyway, so uh, what happens is 
uh, he, if he, he would see the guy's a yid, how would you tell the guy's a yid? Remember, in those days, not everyone wore kisui rosh, and even if you did have kisui rosh, a lot of people just wore turbans. So, how would you know if a guy's a yid or not? If he would wash his hands before eating. Because they would have, I guess, he'd bring out the, you know, the, like the waiter brings out bread, puts it on the table, and if the guy would wash for the bread, got to feed him kosher. And if the guy doesn't wash his hands, he must be a goy. So he would feed him nevelo or chazer. So lo and behold, the guy walked in, didn't wash mayim rishonim, didn't do netilas yitayim, and as a result, he was fed tarvus, right? So that's the story. What's the second story? That because of a lack of mayim achronim, either a man divorced his wife or ended up killing his wife. So let's take a look. This story, Rashi says, is in the Gemara in Maseches Yoma. You'll see why this is relevant in a minute to our whole discussion of mayim achronim for women. The Gemara in, in Yoma Daf Pei Gimel Amid Beis, the Gemara says as follows: Rabbi Meir of Rabbi Yehuda of Rabbi Yossi Habu Ka'azli Bu'urcha. These three ra- great sages, Tanoim, were once on a road trip. Rabbi Meir Habu Daik Bishma, Rabbi Yehuda of Rabbi Yossi Lo Habu Daiki Bishma. And the story goes that Rabbi Meir would ask a guy, "Tell me, Rabbi Yid, what's your name?" And the guy would tell him his name. And if the name was a good name, Reb Meir would feel comfortable with the person. But if his name was like, you know, measles or something like that, he would say, no, this is not a guy I want to deal with. Uh, there's something wrong with him because of his name. But Reb Yossi and Reb Yehuda felt that that was a narish guy, and they didn't bother. So, let's look at the story. So they come to a place, they're looking for a place of lodging, and they find an inn, and the guy says, come on in, you guys can stay. Amr lo mashmecha. So they said, what's your name, Reb Yid? So Amr lo hu, Kidor. He said, my name is Kidor. That must mean something either in Persian or, or, or Babylonian or Aramaic. So Amr shmabina adam rashahu. So Reb Meir says to himself, this guy is not a savory fellow, because shenemar Kidor tapu chosema. Ki dor tapu because they are a generation that is in upheaval, right? An overturning ge- generation. So he said, ki dor doesn't sound kosher. So he was very suspicious of the guy. But Rabbi Yehudav Reb Yossi Ishlimu Saihu, and like Rashi says, it was Erev Shabbos, so they gave the guy, he said, would you like to put your money in my safe? And they said, yes, thank you very much. So they each surrendered their money bags and they gave them to Kidor, the innkeeper. And Rabbi Meir, lo ashlam like he said, Rabbi Meir said, I'm good. And he kept his, he kept his money bag to himself. But what is he going to do? <coughs> Shabbos is coming. He's, it's Muktza. So what is he going to do with his money bag? So Azal Osve be Kivre de He went to the cemetery that was behind the inn and put his money bag behind the father's cemetery the father's grave is a hiding place for the money. Who figures, who's going to look in the cemetery for money? So, But what Reb Meir didn't know was is that Kidor's father appeared to him in a dream. That night, Friday night, Kidor's father appears to him in a dream and says, son, you'll never believe it, but there's a bag of money right over my body. So Kidor wakes up the next morning, and Lamachar Amr Lahu Hachi Yischazi Li Bechelmoi. So Kidor says, "You'll never believe what I dreamt last night that there's a bag of money over my father's grave. I can't believe it." So Amri Lei Chelma Debe Shimshi Lesbuhu Mehmasha. So they said back to him, and I'm sure Rabbi Meir was schwitzing a little bit at this point, and Rabbi, they said to him, "You know, dreams that you have over Shabbos, when you've had a lot of food and you're oversleeping." The crazy things you'll see in your dreams on Shabbos. So don't worry about it at all. It probably means nothing. So, Azul Rebbe Meir, Venatri Kuleyoma Ba'aisi, but Rebbe Meir was a little bit nervous. So, what does he do? The whole Shabbos, he's standing by the grave, watching over his money to make sure that the guy doesn't come for his money back. So, Lamachar Amrulao Havlan Kisa. After Shabbos, Reb Yossi and Reb Yehuda say, Reb Yid, we're ready to go and depart on our journey. It's Sunday morning. Let's go. Please give us our money bags. So what does the guy say? I don't know what you're talking about. What money bags did you give me? Aha. So Reb Meir has been vindicated. Kidor is not a very savory guy. Okay? Reb Meir was right to be medayik and the shame. 
So Amr Lehu, Reb Meir, Amay Lo Daikisu Bishma. Reb Meir says you should have done what I do and listen to the guy's name and realize that he's an unsavory character. So Amr Lehu, Amay Lo Amar Tlanmar. So they said to Reb Meir, well, why didn't you warn us? So Amr Lehu, Amr Da Amri Ana Cheshasha, Chazukim the Amri, because why should I accuse another person of being a bad person? In other words, to be Choshesh, you should be Choshesh. If a guy has a really lousy sounding name, you should be Choshesh. I think I think well it was <laughs> I think there was a when I was living in Pennsylvania there was a, 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 a um, gastroenterologist whose name was Dr. Pickle and I figured that that probably would not be a guy I'd want to go to for stomach problems <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm sure you can find other examples of this you know when you find that you find someone who's got a strange name you probably want to stay away so that so if mayor says, but it's only a chashasha. You can't say, I had, I had no right to tell you my suspicion. That would be Lashon Har about a perfectly good guy who's got a cheskes kashrus. Right? So that's why I didn't say anything. So mashchuhu va'ayeluhu l'chanusa, chazu tal So what do they do? They bring him, or they, they bring the, this guy to the store, to speak to him, to sort of try and get him to convince him to confess. Chazu tal And they see that the guy has the remnants of some lentil soup or lentil stew on his mustache or on his, on his beard. Right? So they notice he's just had lentils for dinner. So azlu v'yavu simulat visu. So they go home to the wife and they say, your husband, you know, we were just speaking to him and he told us that you should give us the money that he left that was belongs to us. And by the way, he said that the sign that we, we spoke to him is he said to us to tell you that he had lentils for dinner and that would be the sign that we're telling the truth. So what did she do? The shaklu likisayu vaisu. So they took their money and they left. So this was how they used their guile to be able to get the money from this guy. So what they basically, they took him to a saloon to try and get him out of the house. They notice the lentils on his mustache. They come home to the wife and say, give us the money. And here's the simon that uh, we spoke to your husband and he okayed it because he said lentils for dinner. And she said, okay. And she gave him the money. So he, when he comes home and he discovers the money's missing, so this version of the story in Yom is that he went and killed his wife, and the other version, like the Gemara said in Chulin, is that he divorced his wife. So the 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 Gemara's conclusion is Hainu Detanya that Mayim Rishonim Hechilo Basar Chazir Mayim Achronim Hargu Hanefesh that Mayim Rishonim ended up feeding a guy Chazer, like that story we had about the restaurant, uh, the non C O R restaurant, and Mayim Achronim. Hargu es hanefesh, and not washing mayim achronim, because if the guy had properly washed mayim achronim, as we know that many Mephorshim speak out that not only are you supposed to wash your hands, but you're supposed to, this is the makar for not only washing your hands, but also placing your fingers over your mustache and your mouth to make sure that your mouth is clean as well, because of course you're going to say a bracha, right? And the guy didn't wash mayim achronim, and as a result of that, Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda were able to get their money back, and the husband killed his wife as a result. Okay. Now, why is that story relevant to women in mayim achronim? You'll see momentarily. Okay. You can finish that gemara on your own. Let's just go take quickly look at the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch writes. The, the, the Shulchan Aruch is very interesting in Simon Reish in Simon Kuf Pei Aleph. There's ten seifim. So if Aleph says Mayim Achronim Chova, the Machaber says that it's obligatory. And then in the final Sif, he qualifies it and he says, Ye no hagim lito Mayim Achronim. There are some who do not have a minute to wash Mayim Achronim. And even if you are among those people who have such a minute, and by the way, many are Medayik in the language of the Machaber. It's not like the Machaber. Normally, what would we expect the Machaber to do? If the Machaber is bringing two different opinions, we would expect him to bring, like he does in most cases in the Shulchan Aruch, in one Se'if, he brings Yesh Omrim She'chayovim B'mayim Achronim, V'yesh Omrim She'ein Chayovim, or Yesh Nogim She'ein Chayovim B'mayim Achronim. But he doesn't <coughs> do that. He starts off the Se'if saying, 
It's a chova. It's an ob- obligation. And then at the very end, he says, yesh noge. So it seems like the way that the achronim are medayik is that it's a very reluctant yesh noge. He pushes it off until the very end of the simon because he doesn't want people to rely on it. But he says, vafilu l'noagim came, but even those who are noeg this way, adam shehu istinis, v'rogil litol yad of acher ha-seuda, l'didei havu yadai mezuhamos, v'tzarech litol yad of koidem birkas ha If a person is fastidious in his personal cleanliness, and he always washes his hands after he eats a meal, regardless of whether he's going to say birkas ha or not, if he doesn't wash mayim achronim before benching, then he's in violation of the halacha for sure. Such a person would for sure have to wash mayim achronim in order to be able to bench. Even if you live in a kahila where the predominant minog is not to wash, but if you yourself are an istinus and you're fastidious and you don't want there to be schmutz on your fingers before you leave the table, then you're mamish for sure obligated to wash mayim achronim, regardless of what the prevailing minog is in the community where you live. How do we define mayim achronim? That's a different shear, but the pashtus is enough to clean your hands from the shmutz that's on them. The gra says you should have a revius, l'chol apachos. There are other shitas as well, um, and that's why many of us are so mech to use the little maimachronim thing at the table, but that's a whole different shear. That's a whole different story. Uh, we'll t- maybe uh, devote another shear to that. Mishnabura. Mishnabura at the we're just quoting the Mishnabura at the beginning of the simon. And the Mishnabur at the end of the simon. So first he says, Mayim achronim. He says, Atam yishum shadai mezuma hosein min ha'achil of sulos lebracha. He says it's because when you have dirty hands, you can't make a bracha with dirty hands. The samchu chazal akra. And like I, like I mentioned, it's an asmachta <coughs> based on the pasuk. The vihiskadishtem v'isem kidoshim, vihiskadishtem elomayim rishon, and v'isem kidoshim elomayim achronim. He says, and this is true, even if you yourself are not saying the bracha, but you're just hearing the bracha and you're answering Amen. The Yosser Mizan, I'll go even further, says the Mishnah Bura, Afilu Kishen Yadav Mizumahus Klau Min Ha'achila, Gan Kein Chiyavu Chazal Benetilas Mayim Achronim. That even when your hands are not dirty, our sages still obligated you to wash Mayim Achronim. The who, and what's the reason? He says because of the fear of Melach Sedomis, the sodomite salt, which we talked about in Masech Eschulen, and because uh, every meal has salt, as we know that there's such a halacha. You have to worry that maybe even in your regular table salt, there may be some melach sedomis that's very noxious, and therefore you have to be careful with it. And then the Mishnah Bura says something very interesting. He says, today we don't have melach sedomis. And therefore, y- many of you are aware that some people rely on this as the heter, that because we don't have melach sedomis anymore today, there's no, n- and y- it's assuming your hands are clean. And assuming there's no Melech so what's the need to wash your hands before benching? Mishnah Burris says, you know what? We don't have w- formally this chemical called sodomite salt, but we do have other kinds of things that we have at the meal that could potentially be harmful if we rub our eyes after the meal. Other kinds of salt, other kinds of additives in our foods, right? MSG, who knows what, right? So therefore, he says that you should always wash your hands. You go to the very last if cotton of the Mishnah Bura, or at the very end of the of Simon Kuf Bey Aleph, and the Mishnah Bura says in Sif Katan Chaf Beis, he says on this halacha that Yeshe Einoagim that some have a minog not to wash my machronim. He says why? So he says Mipnei Shein Melach Sedomis Matzoi Beinenu, Umishum Yadai Mizu Mahus Ein Choshesh In Hol VeAchshav Ein Makpidim LeRochtsan MiLichlucha Maachal. He says, listen to what he says. He says, number one, there's no melasodomus. Number two, he doesn't say that our hands are not dirty. He says, today, people are not as concerned about cleanliness as they were in the times of the Gemara. He says, because people walk around with greasy hands, with dirty hands in our communities, more so than they did in the times of the Gemara. So if that's the norm, that it's not considered to be normal to have any problem with a little bit of schmutz on your hands, 
So then you don't, it's not called uh, mines, yadai uh, mezuhama, it's not called dirty hands anymore. If the norm is to have a little bit of grease, it's not a problem. And therefore, it's not considered to be a violation of cleanliness if the norm of society is to accept a certain degree of dirtiness on the, on the fingers. It's a very interesting th uh, thesis because essentially it basically says that society determines the standards of cleanliness. And by the way, we have this in both directions. I remember, remember Laser, we had many years ago that shear on taking showers on Yantav. Right, and we mentioned that what is a hana hashav al nefesh? Can you heat up water on Yantiv to take a shower? That, that was one of the big things we had to surmount if it's because the Tosva says that heating up water to take a bath is not hana hashav al nefesh. So we said, but it depends on societal mores. Here you see that the Mishnah Burah says that some have argued that there's no need for my machronim today because this, the cultural mores of the time when this halach is, breed, is being written that you don't have to wash is because people don't care about a little bit of shmutz on the fingers. But things certainly, the pendulum has swung in the other direction, back to the good old days, right? When people were more concerned about cleanliness. When, you, when do you apply the rule of apapisha batvatam, you still, you still do it, and when don't you? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, apparently it's totally if the reason that's given is because of is, is given specifically in the takana. If the takana is made with a specific reason in place, that you have to be clean. And so what if today's definition, clean is a very subjective thing. What is the definition of clean? Today, if you even have a little microbe on your fingers, people go nuts and they want to spritz with the Purell. Right? So what is the definition of clean? So every generation has its own definition of clean. So in the times of Chazal, definition of clean is wash your hands before be, uh, when you're done eating. Today, people don't wash their hands, says the Mishnah Burah, and therefore it's not a problem. Could it be also because of napkins? I mean, the fact that he's saying that in Makdila or something could be because they used napkins or what they see in the hands. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. People use utensils today. Yeah. We're going to get to yeah. utensils in a minute. We're going to get to utensils. But he doesn't talk about utensils either. I'm just telling you what he says. You want to? You can. You can give kaneches and taiches, perhaps. Maybe if the Chabad time was here, he would tell us what he means. But this is all he says. But then he concludes and he says, "V'das hagra, the viuro, the tzarech lito gam ha'idna, the gra paskins that today unconditionally you have to wash today." And he says in the brackets, he says, "The tamel tzedamos v'dam mizumos gam ata shayech chamoshik asafti b'sefala." He says because both reasons are still extant even today. Melech Sodomus, he says, even though we don't have Melech Sodomus, but we have other things, other additives to our food that could be harmful to the eyes. And also there's a concern about cleanliness from the, from the Asmachta, right? Now we have the Kabbalistic concern, which is that that every person should be careful with my Machronim. And this is brought from the Zohar. I gave over a shear a couple of weeks ago to the ladies where I talked about um, Mayim Achronim and the people of Sodom. It's no coincidence that we wash Mayim Achronim for sodomite salt and what did Lot's wife turn into? A pillar of sodomite salt. It's the, the idea of Melach and Sodom are very much intertwined. It's not just because of that idea of the Medrash that says that you know she was she was told her neighbors that she was coming to get salt and really ultimately what it turned out to be was that she was just trying to snitch on her husband that he was inviting guests over. The whole idea of Melech Sodomis, the whole idea of this idea of salt is additives to the food which give more tam to the gashmias of our lives, which is what Sodom was all about. They were into self-gratification. And so the purpose on a, on a, on a, you know, on a more metaphysical level of washing off the Melach Sodomus is to get rid of that um, to get rid of that indulgent nature within ourselves that we breed when we're eating a nice big meal. So that's why we have to wash. You're washing off the, the Yetzirah off your fingers also when you're washing my Machronim. So that's, a, that's sort of the deeper meaning of what my Machronim is for. Let's take a look at a s little snippet from the tour because we're going to need it to see Rabbi Yaakov Emden in just a minute. So the, uh, the tour writes, uh, quoting Toysvis, 
And this is really, Toysfus is the source for why some people argue that you don't have to wash <coughs> Maim Achronim today because there's no Mel of Sedonis. He says, <coughs> That's where Melach should be. Sedonis Beinein. He says, that's the, really, Tosfus is writing, why don't we make a bracha on Mayim Achronim? So Tosfus says, because really the reason for Mayim Achronim used to be because of Melech Sedomis, and now we only do it as a zecher for that Melech Sedomis, you can't really warrant, it doesn't really warrant a bracha. And furthermore, we're not really in fulfillment of the whole takana to begin with because we don't use that shemen, we don't use that fragrant oil anyway. So therefore, below uh, mikru lididan yai mizuhamos. And then furthermore, Taisva says, kaven sheinonu regilam litol, since it's not really called dirty hands because we don't really normally wash our hands anyway after a meal, ve'enanu makpidim bekach. And we're not really, we don't really care about <coughs> dirty hands as much as we did in the times of the Gemara. He says, Umihu im yesh adam shu istinis v'ragil itol yadav achar seuda li bidei hoi v'yadayim v'zu hamaz v'tzorach litol kodom virkas hamazam avoloyach v'arach aleihim klal. And therefore the Torah quotes for the f- conclusion of Taisvus, which is that if you're an istinis and you really do want the clean hands after a meal, then for you it is a chiyah, but you still don't make a bracha. Comes along Rabbi Yaakov Emdin. In the Sefer Mora Ketzia, which is a commentary on the tour, and he writes as follows, and this is in source number eight. He says, "Lefi she'ein melach sedomis beinenu, v'hamavarich nami kaven bechula." He says, "We don't have melach sedomis, and we don't make a bracha." He says, "Velo mikru li didan yayim yadai mizuhamas," and we don't consider it to be dirty hands today. We saw this all in the Mishnah Bura. He says, "Vadai ein kol ze kedai lechalek." Rabbi Yaakov Emden says, this is an insufficient argument to tell us why we don't have to wash Mayim Achronim today. And certainly not a sufficient reason to tell me why we shouldn't make a bracha today. But I have another reason to, dis- to distinguish between Mayim Achronim back then and Mayim Achronim today. He says, He says, back in those days, in the good old days, like Henry VIII, you know, when you had a, a leg of lamb, you had a leg of lamb. You picked it up with your fingers, and that's how you ate it. Right? Just like, whatever. Anyway, so he says, that's the way they used to eat, without spoons and without forks. Famous story in Maseches Nedarim. Two <coughs> rabbis are eating, and one guy's eating with a spoon, and the other guy turns to him and says, "What are you doing eating with a spoon? You got your saliva on that spoon." They were sharing this bowl of gruel together, and the one guy says, "Ich, you're sticking in that disgusting spoon that went into your mouth. You're sticking that into." the bowl again, and I have to eat your spit, I have to eat your saliva. So we see that that was not considered to be proper etiquette to use a spoon. They used their fingers instead. That was the more hygienic way of eating, right? That way you didn't get your saliva on the <laughs> in the gruel. You just got your dirty fingers in. So the other guy turns to them and says, look at, the, uh, look at the schmutz under your fingernails. I have to eat that? But you see, it, at least you see from that story in the Gemara, that it was not such a common etiquette to use a spoon. He says, He says, but that's the reason why in the times of the Gemara when people were generally eating with their fingers, of course the fingers would get, shmut, fingers would get much dirtier. And that's why you have to be machmer to wash my machronim. He says, today, we're much more refined in our culture. We use spoons and forks. We don't hold the cooked food in our hands in most situations. Although the, my mother always told me that when you eat a pulki, she said, even the Queen of England eats chicken with her fingers. That was my, I, that's how I grew up. But, uh, but you have to eat it very nicely, you know, daintily and stuff. So, mistavra de lotzarech netila, then it makes sense that you don't need in our times to wash your hands. 
Afilu Ladas Bale Hakabola Demidi who time Elamishmzu and the Rabbi Yaakov Emna goes even further. He says, even if you hold that there's a Kabbalistic issue of washing off the schmutz off your hands, he says, but if there's no physical schmutz, there's no metaphysical schmutz either. And that's the reason why you don't have to wash my machronim, even if I'll pick Kabbalah, if it's not if it's not the fingers are not dirty. Mihu, however, in Eno Nizar Shalaliga Vitav Shil Ali Ali De Davarachir. But if you're not careful about it and you do uh, grab things with your hands at the table and you do let your hands get dirty, then for sure you have to wash my machron. But if someone is as clear as day that he knows he didn't touch, he says, there's no basis. He says, it's clear to me. This is Rabbi Yaakov Emden. There's no basis for washing my machron. Nashim shalanu ha'istanisot ain't no hagos benetilas yadayim achronim. He says, and this is the key line, he says, it could be, but that's the reason why women, our women who are so finicky, or so, what's the, who's so dainty in the way that they eat, it could be that that's the reason why they're not makbid in mayim achronim. It's just those barbaric men who have such bad manners and eat with their fingers, so they're the ones who need Mahim Achron. Ach Osa She'ein Zihirus Lechel Bekafu Magarefa Ve'en Yedehen Nikiyot But if you have women who are not careful to use a spoon and a fork and they their hands are also not clean Vadai Gam Heina Chayavot Benitilas Yadayim Achron and Kaman Asha Belishum Efresh Vitzarech Lahodi An that obviously they're no different from men, and you have to inform them that they're obligated to wash. Now, it would seem to me, although I haven't seen this brought down, I'm, su- I'm sure someone must discuss it, although I don't have it, uh, I haven't researched it properly. We know that the, ye- the custom of the yek is, uh, people of uh, German Jewish descent, is not to wash my machron. It's a well documented minhag, and it would seem to me that it's rooted in the, what Rabbi Yaakov Emden says, because in the, ger- in the German Jewish communities where uh, table etiquette, was very, very seriously emphasized, you know. And I, I say this without, I mean, of course, you can make make, make as many jokes as you want about the yekas, but <laughs> one thing that you know is that they're very, um, they're very uh, much into et- proper etiquette, right? So because they would eat with, you know, 12 forks and 27 spoons and 37 knives at the table, you know, for all the different courses and everything was always arranged just, just so, so they've never had a chance for their fingers to get dirty, right? So that's the reason why uh, you don't have to uh, <coughs> wash my machronim, according to this argument. Rambam, is this referring to specifically when you eat bread at the meal, or any meal, that's regardless? That's the same oh. question. Is it contingent on, on washing for hamotzi, or is it any So meal? all we've seen since these halachas of my machronim are brought down in the hala- in within the context of birka samazam, it's generally accepted that the halacha of Mayim Achronim is before Bir Kasamazan. That was the Takana. But it would seem clear that if you're even making an Alamichi or even a Bore Nefashos and your hands are dirty, certainly the reason of Yadai Mizuhamos would apply. You could argue, okay, maybe we don't have Melech Sodomis today and the Takana was only for Bir Kasamazan. Because of Melech Sodomis. Because of Melech Sodomis. So therefore you can get away without washing your hands for that reason, but what about the hiskadishtem visam kedoshim that you shouldn't say a bracha with yadayim zuhamos? That would certainly apply, even without birka uh, samaza. <laughs> now, just to this argument of the Moro Kitsi Rabbi Yaakov Emden, I just want to bring let's flip to the end. I'm just going to skip a little bit to par- to source number 13. Mm-hmm. This is from the Yalkut Yosef, which is from uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Yosef Shlita, who is the current Sephardic chief rabbi of Israel today. And he writes, he, you know, he has like a Kitzer Shulchan Aruch for Sfardim, the Yalkut Yosef. And he writes, therefore, af hanashim chayavot b'mayim achronim. He says, he paskins that women are obligated in mayim achronim. So comes along uh, the Haggah, which is also written for by Rav Yitzchak Yosef. And first he quotes the Moru Kitzia, saying that Rav Yaakov Emden gave a reason why women would not have to wash mayim achronim because of this consideration that uh, they use forks and knives. And he writes, if you look to see in the middle of the, where I have the dot, dot, dot in the middle, after he quotes the Yaivitz, the Morikitsiya, he then says like this, Uvimachilas kavot toraso, e no mechubar. But he says, 
I ask forgiveness for, for, for my critique, but I have to say that it's not such a great explanation that Rabbi Yaakov Emden gives. Sharei kos of harambam kol pas sheyesh bo melach tzarech netilas yadayim bachrana because the Rambam writes that any bread that has salt, that is baked with salt, ha- requires mayim achronim. It's not just tafshil, it's not just a, 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 a leg of lamb that requires mayim achronim, but when you eat bread, you have to wash mayim achronim. Now, he says, when was the last time you saw someone eat bread mm. with a fork and a knife? That's not generally not the way people eat bread. He says, mishum melech sedomus, or mishum o melech shetivo kenosomus, either because of melech sedomus, or because of another kind of salt that's like Melchizedemus. He says, people hold their bread, uh, they eat sandwiches, they eat a piece of challah without a fork and, uh, and a spoon. A bit of a stretch, though. I mean, basically, as you know, the Rambam wasn't just talking about Melchizedemus. In his time. But even if he is just talking, so let's say he is just talking about <laughs> Melchizedemus. So fine. But you see that there's a concern about other kinds of salt as well. He says, Rabbi Yaakov Emden's whole heter was, you don't have to worry about Melech Sedomis, because you're not going to touch the food. You don't have to worry about Zuma, because you're not touching the food. He says, B'mechilas Kvodo, you are touching the food that has salt in it. Fine, you want to argue there's no Zuhama, because the bread is dry, it doesn't leave any residue on the fingers, but what about the Melech Sedomis concern? And even Bizman HaZed, there's, there are chemicals that are like Melech Sedomis that you still should be concerned about. Well, he makes a distinction between salt that's water in water and salt that's mine, like the Yorkel Shokan, which basically says there's no some level, uh, you know, there's no poison in. in uh, okay, in well, you're bringing salt. another you're bringing in another argument that I have on the sheets, but we haven't talked about it yet. You're saying that there's a difference between mine salt and sea salt. I grant you that. But the Mishnah Buris didn't make that distinction. The Mishnah Buris just says there may be other kinds of chemicals that are additives to our food that are like Melech other kinds mean. of other kinds of salt. He doesn't even mention the Aruch HaShulchan. The Mishnah Buris never quotes the Aruch HaShulchan. Exactly. Right, because who, I don't e- we don't even know if he had the Aruch HaShulchan printed in, in his lifetime well, when he was writing the Mishnah Buris. He was his predecessor. All right, okay. <laughs> there are plenty of times when there are historical predecessors. It doesn't mean he had a copy of the set. It was very difficult to get Sfarim. But anyway, he says, He says, based on the fact that we eat bread with our hands, <laughs> there should be no distinction between men and women. He's, by the way, he's quoting his father, Rav Avadji Yosef, in this paragraph. He says, there is reason, even though you eat with a fork and a spoon. <coughs> And therefore, you could argue that your hands are not dirty. And the Rabbi Yaakov Emden said, therefore, the Kabbalistic art concerns go out the window also. He says, no. Even though there may no, be no physical schmutz, there still is the Kabbalistic concern. So you see, when we're dealing with metaphysics, it's not so easy to make argue svaras back and forth. Well, <laughs> And therefore, Rav Avadji Zichron Olivracha holds the same way as uh, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Yosef, his son, that uh, you should not be mechalek, and certainly for Spartan there should be no chilek whatsoever. Let's continue, though, and see some more sources. Uh, as Alan had pointed out, we have the Aruch HaShulchan, who wants to argue that there may be a distinction between... Uh, here, do you have a... you have one? Okay wants to make a distinction between different kinds of salt, bizman hazeh. So in source number 9, he says, v'nei achshav ladina b'mayim achronim, he says, lo mi baya l'shitas kame mirabo seinu, shemi ikr dina yeshchiyuv gam bizman hazeh, kamo shabi arnu. He says, first of all, it goes without saying, according to those rishonim who hold that you're obligated bizman hazeh, then for sure, right? There's nothing to talk about. He says, But even if you're going to go like Tosfus, who says that nowadays there's not an obligation because we don't, first of all, because we don't have Melech Sedomis and we don't use the Shemen, right? So we're not fulfilling the Takana anyway. He he says, Tosfus is not giving you a carte blanche to go ahead and not wash Mayim Achronim. 
Tosfos is giving a limut, what's called a limut schus. They're trying to defend the practice that really was going on back then, which really people weren't washing my machronim. So I see people are not washing my machronim. So balei Tosfos, just like many other rabbanim of every generation, have an obligation to me, Malambed Zchus, as to why people are not observing the halacha as prescribed. So Tosus is Malambed Zchus, of Algama, Rabbi Zainu, at Tosus, Modem, to Sarchem, Isman Hazet. But even Tosus would admit that, Lichatchile, you should wash my machronim, the mi yemar, Shemel Tzedomus, Eno Motzeg Amata. Who's to say that we don't have Melech Tzedomus today? The Yeroyali. And it would seem to me, says the Arach HaShulchan, he's not saying definitively, he's saying it would seem to me. That salt, salt sea, uh, sea salt, sorry, sea salt, uh, really does have a chashash of melech because it's much more uh, uh, potent. He says the reason why they argued that there's no melech sedomus today is because they used mined salt and not sea salt. The gamatash sham kain hu. He says, and there too, in certain countries, that's the way it still is. the Medina, Seinu Harbei Shaochla Mi Melech Hamayim, the Yesh Bazech Shash Melech Sedomis. He says, but in uh, where we live in Poland or wherever the Aruch Hashulchan was living, he says, people do use sea salt a lot. Now I can't tell you the percentage of Morton salt or whatever we use today in Canada. What percentage of it is mine salt and what percentage of it is sea salt? But sea salt certainly is readily available even today. It is a little bit more expensive, but who's to say that the salt that was put in your food was not sea salt? How do you know? A lot of times they even advertise made with sea salt, yeah. right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, so don't they have all the desalination plants? Are they, are they tape salt and especially the today with desalination plants that they're putting out in California, right, because of the drought. So certainly, what are they going to do with all that salt? So anyway, so who's to say? And therefore he says, the Gambazor Pinchas Hizer al Zeh, the Kholamikubalam Hizero al Zeh. He says the Zohar says wash my machronim, the Mikubalam will say wash my machronim, as quoted by the Magin Avram. Uvin Shubas Minha Shamaim Lechad Meha Kadmonim Mabur Shakola Mekel Bamay Machronim, Mikilam Lo Mizonos of Minha Shamaim. Well, this is a pretty heavy one. He says in this very early tshuva sefer, he says that anyone who is lenient in my machronim, Hashem will be lenient with him as far as his provisions from heaven. So you could be lenient, but Hashem will be lenient in making, giving you your, your parnasa. V'lachein yesh li zoher bazem ha'od. And therefore you should be very careful with it. He says, v'chein noagim kol yirei Hashem. And then finally he says, v'yesh l'chol v'abayis l'hazir l'vnei v'so sh'yizaru bazeh. You should tell your family members, referring to the females as well, not just the males. But he's saying, tell all your family members that they should wash my machronim. So, and this is Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld Paskins that way in source number 10. Take a look at number 11. This is from the Sefer Halichos Bas Yisrael, which I feel is an indispensable uh, reference uh, resource for reference on halachos of women. Because there's, there are very few sfarim that sort of have encyclopedic data available to you categorically about halachas that are unique to women. This is one of the few sparm halichos past Yisrael by Rabbi Yaakov Fuchs, Fuchs, who also wrote the Sefer on Tefillah, Hilchas Tefillah. But he writes like this, um, and this is from page Nun Ches in Halichos Bas Yisrael, he writes like this, Netilas yadayim b'may machronim chiyuv hashove l'noshim k'anoshim. He says it's an equal obligation for men and women. There is no distinction drawn in, in the halacha. And he says in the footnote, he writes like this. He says, Kain Omar Li Hagon Rub Shlomo Zalman Orbach Shlita, which really should be Zatzal. He says, Vahosif Sheitachain Vahanashim Shainan Makpidos Lintol Mistamchos Almaisa Muva Bikamara. He says, This is why I wanted you to see that story about the Gemara, that it's because of Maya Machronim that a man killed his wife. He says, Because that's what women are so mechan to not wash Maya Machronim. Shemayim achronim hotziu isha mi baila va'af hargu es hanefesh that either they cause the marriage to break up or they cause the woman to die. So a woman reading that story umishum kach nimnos milakabel alatzmam natila zu, and that's why women stay away from it. Now that's a very strange. The other way around. Should be the other way around. Yeah. Should, should be much more meticulous yeah. about yeah. it. So I don't understand really Rav Shlomo Zalman's svara other than perhaps it's to say that. 
I'm staying away from my machron, and this stuff is dangerous stuff. Mm-hmm. And you remember, because it was the husband who didn't wash my machron, right? So maybe she says, you wash my machron, keep that stuff away from me, that stuff can kill me, right? Maybe that's the attitude that Shlomo Zalman is trying to portray. He says, But even according to Shlomo Zalman, they really don't have such a smach to be lenient. And if men are going to wash my machronim, then surely the women should wash. Would you say the women are not responsible? Mitzvah Zatzah says man grama, which are Mitzvah Zatzim in the Torah. This is not a Mitzvah Zatzim says says man grama. But it's, it's, it's not even, not even close to being a Mitzvah Zatzim. It's not even a Mitzvah. So uh, what does that have to do with the price so of tea in China? Yes, so, uh, what, what, uh, uh, so why should you, women you're just, There's a cloud that women are not commanded in time-related mitzvahs, both Midoraisa and Midorabana. It's got nothing to do with time-related. This is not a time of, Any time you eat, you have to wash my machronim. And the, there's no distinction made in non-time-related takanas that men and women should be any different. There's no reason. Unless you can give a... a uh, a real practical divide in the Mitzias, like the Morokasiya tried to give, but just to say that once time it's not. Anyway, he says, then he brings from Rav Vosner. He says, Rav Shailos the Chuvah Shevet Halevi Chelak Dalat in the Chav Gimel Kasev Hagro Hagon of Shlomo Vosner Shlita. Also, I think it's that cell. Sha'af Shem Iker Hadin Dinam Ka'anoshim Haminak She'en Kol Anoshim Noblos. He says that even though halachically women and men are equivalent regarding this halacha, there is a minhag that women don't wash. Why? Because nowadays there's no melech sedomis. And people are not careful to wash their hands because we're not so makpid on cleanliness. But it's only the men who accepted upon themselves this chumrah. You know what this li- this argument, this line of argumentation reminds me of? It reminds me of the din of Heseba on the night of the Seder, where we the Shulchan Aruch says that nowadays our minig is not to do Heseba because that's not how people eat at the table. It was in the times of the Gemara, people did Heseba, but now that people don't do Heseba, which is what's, uh, I think it's from the Abi Ezri, so now that people don't do Heseba, it's only a Chumrah. Men accepted the Chumrah on themselves to do Heseba, and therefore women never accepted upon themselves to do Heseba, and therefore they don't have to do it if they don't want to. This is the same line of argumentation that Rav Ozner provides as to why. And as today it's only a Chumrah. Men accepted the Chumrah. Women never accepted it, and therefore that's the other basis for the minute for women not to wash. He says, V'chein shamati mehagon Rav Yonah mar tzabach zatzal sheken ha yaminag harovayach ba'ashkenaz v'afilu b'batei ha'charedim l'dvar Hashem. He says, and Rav Yonah mar tzabach, you said that even in the frumest of homes in Europe, the women did not wash my machar. And it's on that basis that many people have a minag not to wash. Now, I come from a tradition where there was no minhag in our home. And so that's why, based on the preponderance of poskim who don't make a distinction between men and women, the practice in my house has always been to encourage, when I, we have my machronim at the table, which we try to do at all meals, whether it's bread, we encourage the women, we pass the my machronim to the women. But what I've noticed in, in, in many communities, including this, is that when we have guests at the table and I pass around the my machronim, there's not even a havamina for the women to wash my machron. It's like, it's not even ole al hacheshbon. It's not even like here. Oh, what am I supposed to do with this? He passes it along. It's like, in other words, the reason why I raise this issue is because so it's so ingrained within so many women that this is not something that we do. And yet you see very clearly that me'ikr hadin, there really should be no distinction unless you want to be so mechan revazner. Now, Take a look at Rav Sternbach, and this is what we'll finish with. Rav Sternbach says in source number 12, <laughs> This is from his Chubos Vahan Hagos. And Rav Sternbach says, <laughs> I have no basis to make any division between men and women. <laughs> He says, only if you hold 
that it's just the Chumra Bizman Hazeh, because there's no Melech Sedamus, which we already saw is not so Pashat. Both the Mishnah Burr and the Archa Shulchan say that we have salt today that is akin to Melech Sedamus. He says, Velachain after Bishulchan Arch Reshim and Kuf Pei Beis, Pasak to Rambam, Ushar Pirushim, the Afa Idna, my Machron Chauva, Mikol Makam, Besofa Simen, who va Shita Satois, the Yesh Noagim Shein Olim. He says, so some people are so mech on that. The aft, the cause of Hamagin of Ramashem, and the Kubalim of the Birkios of Lachmir Boze, but nevertheless, Mikol Makam, Nashim Lonagu, Bechumro, she is son of Besor Hashem. He says, women never accepted upon themselves chumras that are based on Kabbalah. Avolah fishitas hagrazatzal, but according to the Vilna Gaon, who says that my machron bizman azeh zechoiva, chiyuv midina pshita deshach benashim kibenashim, says, surely women have to wash according to the gra. V'raisi gam eitzel chasidim v'anshe maise, shegam nashim nagu b'may machronim. He says, what I have noticed, is that by Chassid and Anshe Maisa, really know it's really pious individuals who are meticulous in observance, that they do tell their wives to wash Maya Machron. Makes sense if they're Kabbalistic, right? Yeah, Kabbalah. Why should your wife not have the Kabbalistic benefits that you do, right? So, Velachain, Av Shiyesh Yesod, Veikr Minadim, Lenashim, Loli Tol, Kibin Shalishit Hasam, Enoel Achumer, Kemosher Kasavdi, Mikol Makam, Kishemach Miros, Yikablu Al Kachschar. But if he says, listen, there's a side to be Mako for women for sure. But when they're machmir, they'll certainly get real reward. But he says, provided that you don't make a whole feminist issue out of it. I'm just sort of reading into the words. He says, don't do it in such a way where you know you do a mai machronim ceremony where you like, okay, let's do the mai machronim ceremony. You know, okay, the women will now do the mai machronim ceremony. Ding dong. You know, however they're going to do it, whatever. You know. But anyway, the point is, don't make it into a whole boastful kind of practice, because really that's al pi Kabbalah, you're supposed to do it in a humble way. V'chol nikiot. And he reiterates, he says, but this whole idea to say that it's only a chum and al pi Kabbalah, you do it is when your hands are clean. Avol matzoi shahayadayim is almost me ochel. But he says, but many times the hands are dirty. I mean, look, uh, you know, you have a, you go to a kiddush, and you're going to have the wings or you're going to go to a Yerushalmi Kiddush and have uh, the Yerushalmi Kugel with the pickle, right? The classic uh, Yerushalmi Kiddush. There's no question that at some point, it's not only going to be your fingers on the Kugel, it'll be ten other people that pass you the Kugel, their fingers will be on the Kugel too. Right? Everyone's hands are going to be on the Kugel. Va'az meforish b'gemar brachos sha'asr levarech b'yadayim mezuhamos and, you know, we know, we saw from the Gemara that uh, with yadayim mezuhamot, with dirty hands, you can't make a bracha. Zohar machmir shechayev misa im mevarech v'tzarech l'nagev heitev. And so therefore, it's uh, the Zohar says that it, you're chayev misa if you bench with dirty hands, which is a well, that's like pretty uh, very sharp, you know. And therefore, you have to wa- dry your hands very well. That's part of the halacha. Uvaze nashim chayavin shezel chayev natila min adim roi lazim. He says, and certainly when the hands are dirty, women are obligated to wash their hands. So again, as I say, you know, if there is a well-documented minig in your family that like you could come from Yekka stock, or you come from a mishpacha where, you know, you go back, you trace back your family lineage, lineage back to Europe, and, and Bubby so-and-so said, we never washed in the altar haim. Okay, that's one thing, but, you know... It would seem to me that it's from an educational standpoint the proper thing to do is you see a preponderance of poskim, of modern poskim, of Shlomo Zalman, Rabbi Vajia, all of the 20th century, 21st century poskim say that you should wash my machonim for women. Any, any comments? Yes. I think the obvious question is, what about the men? I mean, you, you, you presented here that there is with the exception of the Mor um, it's, a, it's an open and shut case. Yes. Yet the survey at the beginning of this year indicated that it was a common prevalence minhag not to. Uh, then you get the Shabbos, then you have the day. I mean, but the Misa, I, I'm, I'm struggling with, you know, unless you didn't learn it like this from your family, w- how did Halach evolve into such a way where the prevailing minhag is so not to, yet uh, we see that... You know, it's an excellent question. It's a very valid question. I do, you know, uh, you should speak to Rabbi Ziering about the evolution of halacha and how psaki evolves. That's his thesis. 
and he can probably speak more intelligently about the subject. But I would tell you very simply, you know, people who come from European backgrounds, you see very clearly that cleanliness and certainly access to water, to running water, in two or three generations ago was a, was a luxury. And to have to get up and wash my macronum where sometimes the outhouse was out in the freezing cold when it was 20 below zero and to wash my machronim, people figured out how to get by without doing it. Maybe napkins, who said, was it you, Jonathan, who said napkins maybe the people were somechan to get rid of the zuhama. You know, I, I certainly, my theory, my thesis, I'm, I'm not saying this with uh, certainty, but my theory is, is that it evolved because this was what was passed down from European homes. But now that you have running mm. water, and many people even have sinks in their dining rooms, for goodness sake, to make it easy to wash the tilas yadai, I don't really see the basis. I can also tell you that, like, even here at the Minig and the Shul is when we have Shalashudas, there's only one or two people that wash my machronim. Um, my, by the way, my theory is that it could also be that the reason why we don't have my machronim containers on, on the tables or how that reason why that evolved is because a lot of times you end up with more spilled water and schmutz as a result of the Mayim Achronim because it's very difficult when you're dealing with large amounts of people to control the flow of water for Mayim Achronim. But it would certainly seem to me, and I and my kids know this, before benching, I get up, go to the sink, turn on the sink, I wash with at least a revius of water and clean my hands. It's not my machronim in the classic sense of my machronim. What do you mean? It is my machronim. The whole, there's a whole shaila in the post whether you need koach gavro, whether you need a kli or not to wash my machronim. But clearly, I mean, and that's... Well, you can do a koach gavro with a sink anyway. Right, but I, mean, I know what you're saying, Alan, but the point is, is that they understand, you know, it's questionable whether those few drops that you put on your hand yeah, is I mean really fulfilling the... It doesn't. From a Zuma perspective, from a Zuma it's, perspective it's, not, it's going to do it accomplish nothing. So, right, so you'd have to argue that, okay, so it'll uh, fulfill the capitalistic uh, benefit, you know? So, so well, there's argue in, the, in the argument then that if a person has hands that are dirty because they had the chicken and whatever the examples, but at some point they will wash their hands from the that's grease and everything else, and then the they are point. washing by macronin because they're not having dirty hands. The question is, do you benching. do it before benching or not? Do it before that but at that point, your hands are clean. In other words, yeah. the as line long line as you wash, wash your hands before your before you bench, <laughs> you're fulfilling <laughs> the duty of my machron. Right, so the last couple hundred years in Western Europe, certainly, and in North America, I mean, it's, it's the common practice. Basically, if your hands are dirty, you you go and wash them. Right. The problem. Maybe that's the reason my machron. No, but no, but the pro the problem is that people tend to wash their hands after leaving the table, and that usually takes place after birka samaza. That's the, the only critique that you can offer of the common practice of people not washing my machron. But this is only addressing washing before benching. Right. Because if you haven't washed on bread to begin with. The takana was never made on the requirement to wash. The formal takana was <coughs> never instituted. And certainly there's no, the, the, the Kabbalistic discussion is only for meals with bread. Mm -hmm. But as we said, if you understand the underpinnings of why Chazal wants you to be, wants you to wash, is because visa and kedoshin, to be holy before you make a bracha, your hand should be clean. Then it would seem that there's no distinction in pr uh, using that argumentation. Yeah. But do we always follow the kabbalah when it comes to to, to, to doing uh, things? When the post can bring down the couple, when the Magen of Rung brings down the kabbalah, you better believe it. Yeah. Well you better, <laughs> be, better be darn sure you're going to follow the kabbalah. Well, what how about the shalav brings down that you have to stand during the entire kiddush and not sit down because because so of the brother okay, so of you know there's a whole again there's a whole uh, discussion <laughs> as when we follow the kabbalah, but if. That's where you sometimes have a machlokas between the Kabbalah or the Arizal and the Shulchan Aruch. And then it depends on different cultures and different nuschaos and different, whether you're Hasidish, whether you're Litvish, you know. That's where it will depend. But here it's not a question of a machlokas. It's not that someone says, Badafka, you shouldn't wash my machronim. And that's why the Magen and if the Magen Avram brings down the Kabbalah, then you're not sure.